One Belt, One Road is a strategy developed by the Chinese government, which may have major implications for the Chinese economy. What is that strategy and where is it going? With us is Nicholas Kwan. He's Director of Research with HKTDC. Thanks very much for joining us, Nicholas. Hi. Looking really now at the strategy, mm -hmm. what is it aiming to achieve for China? Okay, I have to emphasize first that it's a China-initiated strategy. It has a China contents on it. It's very important for China, but it should not be confined to China. To be successful, it needs to be embraced by the world. But for China itself, it is very important in the sense that China has come through all the years of opening and reform, which is actually one-sided or loop-sided. What I mean is that its opening is all along the coast, all towards the West, and that works for China in the last 30 years, but it's not going to work more in the coming years. So what this new opening strategy is like is, it's not just open new frontiers to sell the product, to look for money and look for resources. It has a full range opening, which means that they also have to open their own market for foreign products to be sold. Uh, it also has to allow its own capital to go out, which normally they talk as going out. But going out is only on one aspect of that opening. It includes products, capital, technology, as well as others. So from, from that perspective, you can see this new strategy is different from the very uh, the previous one. So if this is China's contribution to the new world order, is it likely to be successful, would you say? It's hard to say there's no single strategy that will change the world. And so there's no single country that will change the world. But I would say that it is China's first attempt or major attempt to, change, to help the change uh, of, uh, of the world order. Well, it does indeed seem to be considerable in terms of the effort that's being put into the possibilities that are going to arise in the future. Mm -hmm. Is there a danger, though, that there could be a sort of an overreach of diplomacy, economic input, diplomatic and political input and so forth? Yes, there's definitely some danger and a lot of risk in this new strategy. First of all, many people are aware that <clears throat> the areas that the China is looking for along the One Belt, One Row, many of those are developing countries. They are high risk, not just economic, but also political, social, and the others. Um, it's a big question mark to what extent they can replicate uh, developing model in other countries, including China's. Uh, it has to be something different. But the basic element is there that for any country to develop economically, they need the infrastructure, they need the capital, they need the technology, and they need the market. China is offering itself as part of that solution. If you look at the One Belt, One Road area, whatever countries you uh, cover, at least the area, population, the GDP, and the trade is twice to two and a half times the size of China today. So if just half of that One Belt, One Road area pick up this growth momentum and repeat what, had, what China had done in the last three, 30 years, the world would be very different in 30 years later. So looking at the benefits that would be forthcoming for overseas countries and indeed from Hong Kong as well, if one looks at Hong Kong as being an interchange with, uh, with foreign countries, what do you see those benefits as being? For Hong Kong, there's a huge benefit to profit farm if we get it right and if the one bell one row were to uh, move forward as expected. Whatever party who want to join the game and benefit from that, they need someone to go in between. China is very unique in many sense, it's including its own development model. The same for the rest of the One Belt One Road countries. We have different cultures, different religions, different resources uh, along this uh, One Belt One Road area. We need an intermediator. Hong Kong is that in intermediator. We are very good in providing platforms. Platforms for people to train, platforms for people to invest, platforms for people to exchange wheels, ideas, and platform for technology to be, uh, to be traded. All these are basic ingredients for any economic development. Nicholas, thanks very much for that.